Well, this is a brief video. Um, there are really good examples on YouTube of how to take ethanol out of petrol, but they don't really explain um, the basics. Uh, so I thought I would do one for uh, for the benefit of uh, my chums round this way, actually, because uh, we had a chat yesterday, uh, a friend and I, and um, didn't really get to grips with uh, how easy it is to remove ethanol from petrol. So uh, first thing to remember is that uh, E10 has got 10% ethanol so you have to make sure you put uh, enough water into that old wine, uh, one gallon wine jar that I use for, uh, I used to make wine in it but it was handy, you can, you can use plastic containers. This suits me. The first thing is to remember that you've got to get all of that 10% out. So you need more than a tenth of a gallon of the uh, ethanol mix to, uh, to get the whole thing out. So I put just over a pint of ordinary tap water in there, into that gallon container. Whack that in first. And then I can be sure that when I add the petrol that will absorb all of the ethanol. Uh, so the next thing we do is pop some E10 in, which I just happen to have in this five gallon container. It's very easy. And the point is that all of the ethanol will become part of the water. So there will be no ethanol left. I'll leave it at that point. Uh, people uh, sort of say, well, why is it that ethanol dissolves in water. Well, when you think about it, when you have a pint of beer, there's a certain percentage of exactly the same alcohol in it. Um, another name for ethanol is ethyl alcohol. Um, now, I did look up what the C2H5OH, that's it, is the type of alcohol that's safe to drink in <laughs> well, up to a point, and you can see straight away that the petrol and the ethanol are stratified, and there's the, there's the level. So that uh, one pint of water now contains all of the ethanol in that, well, almost a gallon of petrol. So what I'll do is just give it a quick shake up to be sure. So the point is that uh, when you have your pint of beer, there's ethyl alcohol in there, uh, which is fully dissolved in the water. And it's exactly the same with the petrol. The ethyl alcohol is absorbed by the water because ethyl alcohol is hydroscopic. In other words, it completely dissolves and it does that um, by ionic bonding. And those of you who have done a bit of O-level chemistry will have been forced to learn about ionic bonding, mostly with salt. Um, and they tell you that salt, which is sodium chloride, that's NaCl, and the Na is plus, the Cl is minus and uh, they share covalent bonds with the hydrogen in the H2O in the water. So the whole lot floats around in the water, completely dissolved. Same thing with uh, uh, this uh, ethyl alcohol. Uh, same sort of thing, it's a covalent bond, C2H5OH, and where you've got an OH at the end, it, that's a, a hydroxyl, which is a negative uh, cation, negative ion is a cation, positive ion is a, 
an anion. So you've got covalent bonding and uh, basically they share electrons with the water in the hydrogen. You get this hydrogen bonding. So that's why ethyl alcohol or ethanol completely dissolves. So there you have it. As you can see already, the, uh, the water level has gone up uh, because it's absorbed the 10% ethanol. The water level was about there and it's now gone up to there, which shows that the 10% ethanol is now fully dissolved. And um, I shall leave that for a little while and then I'll siphon it off to about uh, about three sixteenths or you know three or four millimeters above that mess at the bottom. Um, the reason I don't draw all the petrol off is because I don't want to suck the water in. Uh, it's that simple and um, all of my old vehicles will be using uh, ethanol free petrol which I've uh, done by this method. Now the, there is a snag, uh, there's always a snag isn't there? Uh, ethanol uh, increased the uh, the octane rating of the petrol so in the very old vehicles that uh, have to be concerned about um, uh, lead free petrol uh, I use a uh, VS, well Miller's, you can use anything lead substitute, uh, they use manganese instead of lead to lubricate the valves so that you know you don't get pounded uh, valve seats. Uh, they use manganese in this one. But it's also an octane booster so that takes care of the problem with the ethanol uh, reducing the uh, octane rating. Um, uh, the octane rating affects pinking. Uh, it doesn't really affect old cars because the uh, compression ratios are fairly small. Now the other thing that I've noticed doing this is that you get this white uh, liquid at the bottom, the ethanol and the water mix, and I'm not sure whether or not the effect of doing this may have taken out some of the additives that were put in the petrol, because it, you know, this white shows there's an uh, immiscible fluid uh, that's actually got into this level. If that was completely clear I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be wondering if it could be taking out some of the additives. So what I do I buy this stuff in bulk uh, complete fuel treatment injector cleaner and fuel conditioner and every now and then I add a bit of that to the various vehicles. As I say the very old vehicles um, that have to have a lead substitute, you've got the octane booster. The uh, other vehicles where it's not so important, in other words 5% is okay, 5% ethanol, um, I just uh, fill up with E10 and then put uh, perhaps a third of uh, ethylene, ethanol free petrol in to, uh, so that it forms a mix. Uh, of course another problem with old, well we all know the problems with old vehicles, the ethanol takes the paint off. If you've got tank liners, as I have in one of my old bikes, it will take the tank liner out and clog a carb. Uh, if you've got a fiberglass tank, ethanol will destroy it. It will destroy old paint. So there's not uh, too much good to be said about ethanol in, uh, for old vehicles. Uh, another problem is that the ethanol affects the air fuel ratio. Uh, now, sort of pure petrol is about 14 to 1, what they call a stoichiometric air fuel ratio, and um, that affects how much air uh, you need to completely uh, burn uh, w um, one section of petrol. So, if you've got a gram of, uh, of petrol, you'd need 14 grams of air. So that's called the stoichiometric fuel ratio, and that reduces uh, the more ethanol you put in, the more it reduces. So what that effectively means is that for every gram of air, you're just not getting enough uh, fuel. If it drops from 14% to say 7 to 1, 
which I think is for pure alcohol roughly. Anyone that used alcohol in racing bikes know that they have to increase the main jet size by well, 100% sometimes. So more ethanol in the petrol, the, uh, the more detrimental the effect on uh, carbureted engines because they go lean. And um, that's what you have your lambda sensor for in your car. The lambda sensor, lambda is the uh, Greek sign for the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. And uh, the lambda sensor, which they also call an oxygen sensor, so it would detect the oxygen, uh, which is 20% of the uh, the air fuel ratio. So if you've got 14, if you've got 14 to one, so you've got one gram of petrol, one, uh, 14 grams of air of that 20% would be uh, oxygen so the lambda sensor would uh, would be looking at that it's not you know rocket science um, when incidentally if, if the uh, lambda sensor does fail they, they tend to uh, fail so that you just use more petrol so that you won't be running lean but as far as a carbureted engine is concerned the more ethanol the bigger the main jet so you're actually using a lot more so as far as I can see taking out the ethanol is by far the best thing you can leave all your uh, carbureted uh, all your carburetor uh, jets the same you're not going to get problems with uh, uh, tank linings being taken out you're not going to have problems with paint uh, the only thing to remember is that you might need to boost the <laughs> Uh, octane slightly in, in but it's not really a problem with old cars because they tend to have low compression ratios uh, you, you know you need octane boosters where you've got high compression engines um, so what I do uh, with the old very old cars and bikes pop a bit of lead substitute in which is as I say a manganese uh, based a chemical a um, little bit of injector cleaner and fuel conditioner just in case that white fluid does contain some additives um, and there you have it uh, there are some really good e examples of this on on YouTube and you, you'll find some people actually use um, very accurate pipettes and they, they will actually show you that uh, uh, all of the ethanol all the 10% will go into the water and will not remain in the petrol but I think you could see that the level was about there and it's gone up to there because it contains all the uh, ethyl alcohol and as I say ethyl alcohol is just like the stuff you drink uh, and that's why it dissolves in water because uh, of the covalent bonding uh, so there you go how, how simple is that